I've got two weeks left. Oh my God, where has this nine week placement gone? I have no idea. Or to put it even better or worse, I don't know what it is. I haven't decided yet. I've got five shifts left, five shifts left, and then I'm done for my 3.1 placement. All I've got left then is I'm back at university for a few months. We've got our poster presentation and our ACP dissertation, not dissertation, that I keep banging on about. And then our final management placement in September. Dum, dum, dum. So the last couple of weeks, to be honest, I didn't want to keep repeating myself in vlogs. So I just wanted to do a couple of extra vlogs of things that I've learned on training days and things, some things that people might find useful. I'm hoping they've been useful to somebody. So that's what I've been posting for the past couple of weeks. But now I'm coming to the end of my placement. I've learned a few new things. I've dealt with a couple of situations and I'm gonna share that because it's something that you might come across in placement and it's really good to know about. One of the things that I wanna talk about is my mentor has been absolutely amazing and she has been the nurse in charge a few times, which I've never seen before. I've never been with one of the nurses that have had to deal with that sort of thing. So this was brand new stuff that I was doing on placement. So I've been seeing sort of the, not behind, I don't wanna say behind the scenes, but it's not behind the scenes, but then I wanna say behind the scenes, but it's not behind the scenes, but the nurse in charge stuff, basically. The things that go on that you don't really see when you're on the ward helping your patients and caring for the patients and you don't sort of see actually the work that goes behind the scenes that the staff and nurse has to do as well as all of the rest. So there's a few things that I did extra that I'd never seen before. I found it really, really amazing, really interesting. And I'm just gonna share that information with you and hopefully you will get to experience this as well. Firstly, I just want to say that this might be different in different trusts, locations, different areas, different placements. This is just what I've experienced personally on this particular placement. So my nurse in charge, she will organise the day, basically is the first thing she will do. She'll look in the diary, she'll allocate staff to which bays and which patients that they, they're going to, she'll allocate the breaks for the day, sort all of that sort of side things out. And then she will deal with any sort of complaints. She will escalate concerns of patients for other members of staff. And then at half past nine, we have the conference call, which is basically a phone call and there will be someone leading that phone call and they will connect the all of the wards and the different hospitals in that particular trust. So they will all be on this big conference call at half past nine and they will go over bed allocations. So how many beds they've got, each ward has got. They will go over staffing issues, so if anyone's needs staff, if anyone's down staff, any problems like that. If that sort of needs escalating to get in the agency staff to cover those shifts, to make sure that nobody's short. And just at the end, sort of a general open questions, any concerns, anything like that to talk about at the end. But I thought this was amazing. I have never seen this happen before. I don't know whether it's because not every trust does it or whether it's just because I haven't had the opportunity to do that out on placement but if you work for a trust or if you're a nurse that works for a trust and you've experienced this where you all have a conference call you all get together to sort of look at all of these sort of things please let me know because this is the first time I've done it and I just thought it was amazing I think it's a really really good way to assess the the whole area the whole trust and get everyone's input and get everybody involved and stuff and it was just a really good way I think of monitoring that it was absolutely amazing to see I absolutely loved it and then later on at half past 10 in the morning we have our Jonah meeting now I have never I've always heard about Jonah meetings but I've never actually gone to a Jonah meeting to see what happens what's discussed I don't know who attends anything like that so this for the third year student and this being the first time I've ever attended a Jonah meeting I don't think that's normal because I have heard that first years have done it, second years have done it. I think maybe I'm just a little bit behind with this one, guys. So I'm really sorry if I'm telling you information that you already know. But if you have been to a Jonah meeting, is it the same sort of thing as what I'm about to discuss? Let me know. So in this particular Jonah meeting that we have at our trust, there is the usually the ward manager or matron. There will be the nurse in charge and student. And they will be the physio team, the OT team, and the doctor. And they will all get together. They will, they'll have the big, this big whiteboard or paper or however they do it in each journey meeting. They will have something with a list of all of the patients, when their planned discharge is, what's holding them back, what they've got to be assessed, what 
needs, um, what's the plan of action basically for each and every patient to get that patient fit, well and home again. And this literally starts from patient one all the way to the very last patient and they'll just work their way through. And this was actually amazing to see. I loved seeing the whole plan of action for every single patient because I've discovered that I really like knowing more about everybody else's patients. I, I'm not, I don't like just knowing about my Bayer patients because then if there's a problem in another bay or in another area, someone else's patient, something happens and you don't know that patient as well, um, it's, I don't like it. I just, I just don't like it. That's, that's all I can say, I just don't like it. I like to know about everybody's patients. I like to know what's going on. But this was just absolutely amazing to see all of the teams come together, talk about each patient and where they're at and see different people's points of views as well because from our point of view, it might be one thing, like we might say, they're fine, they can go home, they're fine. But then from an OT point of view, they're like, hang on, we've assessed them at home and they're not good at this, this and this and they're not good at this sort of transfer or this or they need seat re raises or they need bed rails or something like that and we're just like and then i'm just sat there thinking oh yeah didn't think of that so it's just all these little things that everyone's expertise come together it's like this big jigsaw puzzle that just comes together and fits together nicely just to make this whole picture for the patient to make sure that all of their needs are met before they're, they're discharged because the last thing you want is them to go home unsafe and something happens to them at home after they've been discharged and then they're back in hospital so everything needs to be done and met before that patient leaves to make sure they're safe and the last thing that I wanted to just raise awareness about or speak about, I can't go into too much detail because this is regarding a patient that we had and something happened to that patient, but the, the details were so, so specific, I literally can't physically say a word because it would, it might, if someone was watching this and recognised the situation or recognised where I was based or recognised the patient, if it was a relative, they will click on to what has happened and actually that that's their patient because this was such a rare thing that happened um, so I can't go into details but following on from that I wanted to talk about mental health and capacity of a patient just from following from that incident because this is the main thing that I picked up on. So at university in actually probably every job that I've worked at in healthcare we always talk about patient capacity, we always talk about giving somebody the choice and the rights to maintain their dignity and all of this and you have to respect those wishes no matter what. For example you might have a patient they might need a blood transfusion to literally save their lives but just due to their religious background, their cultures, they won't have a blood transfusion. So they're well within their right to refuse that blood transfusion as long as they've got the capacity and they know exactly the risks that's involved with refusing that. So if they know that they're gonna die, if they don't have the blood transfusion, they understand the implications and the risks involved, they have that right to refuse, basically, if that makes sense. I hope I've explained that right. So we did have a patient and something happened to that patient and they refused all care. They, knowing the risks that the, there was a potential of death, there's potential of sepsis, there's potential of all these different things that's gonna happen to them, they still refused, they still declined all care possible. And that person, I think there was sort of a bit of a gray area, whether they did have capacity, whether they didn't have capacity and that then needed to be assessed for this particular patient so in eventually luckily they did get the help they needed and there was a capacity assessment done and they were because where our work is community based this patient needed the more acute care setting so that person did have to move on to a, an appropriate setting for that person i'm trying to really word my words wisely with this i'm sorry but I just wanted to raise the awareness that your patient might refuse care, there might be something that's really gonna seriously harm their health, and you might not agree with their decision, but they actually have the capacity to make that decision, they have the right to refuse, whether it's the right or wrong choice for them, in your opinion, you, you have to respect that either way. You have to respect your patient's wishes, and as long as it's documented, as long as all the capacity assessments are done, the patient has the right to do that, regardless of what your opinion is on the matter. And there have been times in the past where I've had patients and they've made this sort of decision to refuse treatment, knowing that they will literally die. Or I've had a patient before that 
I gave them all this health education about smoking and COPD and it was literally killing this patient and the patient was like I'm gonna die anyway so what's the point and I was just, it's some things like that really shock me and in my head I'm thinking why why make a safe choice live your life live a healthy lifestyle but obviously on the outside I'm like okay I respect your decision I've, I've just got to give you the advice go through all the risks and things and it's completely up to you it's your decision I can just advise but we can't we can't no matter what our opinions what our thoughts are we can't enforce that on patients we can't show those emotions we have to hold back and we have to be professional and respectful of that patient's wishes so I just wanted to raise just a little bit of awareness of that that you might have a patient out there they might decline everything but as long as you've done the right things and you've gone about it professionally you've documented it you've done everything in your power you could do in the best interest of that patient and respecting the patient's wishes you can't go wrong whether it's whether you believe it's the right or wrong decision you have to do what's best for the patient and you have to respect their wishes and also regardless of what your opinion is what you think you have to be non-judgmental you know it's there it's in the nmc code of conduct we have to be non-judgmental we can't judge patients for their decisions we have to respect those wishes and that's exactly how i am and that's exactly what i do in my own practice and i should hope everybody else out there does that i'm just raising the awareness to say that actually it is quite difficult sometimes but you have to put your own feelings aside and complete nurse mode and for your patient basically and just on a final note, I'm going to draw this vlog to an end before I speak way too much about everything. So I just wanted to say that actually sometimes you might get an allocation of a placement area come through to your email on your university site and you may look at it and you might think, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to like this. I'm not sure if I'm going to learn much. Um, is this a third year allocation? These are the thoughts that I had when I had this allocation. I thought I've I've had dementia patients, I've done rehabilitation when I was on my orthopedic ward, I've done all these things and I it did worry me about this placement that I might not learn the more management side of things and leadership roles and things like that that we need for third year. But do you know what? I that is me eating my words because I should never have said that. I completely regret saying that. I completely regret even thinking that about this placement because I've learned so so much about this placement especially more management things with the um, conference calls and how to run a ward seeing all the different aspects has just been amazing and I've learned so so much about that side of things and I was really really surprised at how much I absolutely loved this ward so this one has shocked me and I just wanted to throw that out there to everybody please please don't judge anywhere until you've been there, until you've finished your placement, and then you can decide whether you like a particular area or what you're gonna learn from an area. Because my book for my placement is now full of everything and it's almost signed off because I've done so, so much there. It's been fantastic. So that is it from me this week. Thank you again so much for everybody that watches my vlogs and tunes in. I hope you have an, an amazing weekend and I'll see you next week for my final week of placement. Fingers crossed, I don't do anything silly. I don't get chucked off the course. This is what goes through my mind at the end of placement. <laughs> even though I know I'm good, even though I know I always practice safely, it's always that worry like, what if? What if something happens? What if it fell back on me? Oh my God. There's always that in the back of everybody's minds, I think. But fingers crossed, it's gonna be an amazing week and I'll see you all next week, guys. See you later.